in that lineup. So Alec Manoa facing Mauricio Dubon, and we're underway with a first pitch blooper into right field, and Dubon has himself an opposite field hit. Nothing new there. Dubon leads the team in opposite field hits. One pitch and a base runner already for the Astros. Around the bunt, getting it down the third baseline. Manoa's watching this. Will it stay all the way fair? It is true as Manoa goes down and almost pulls off a Lenny Randall to try to blow it foul. He could not believe that ball stayed fair. And again, has not won a game here at home. Jordan hits it on the ground, smashes it past Vladdy Guerrero Jr. That'll score a run. Dubon's going to come around and score. Jordan with an RBI base hit. The Astros with three hits to start the game lead 1 0. This ball hit to center field. That'll send Kiermeyer back, still going back, and now he stops right shy of the warning track. He'll throw to second. Pena's going to get over to third base as he tags up. Jordan thought about it. Tucker line drive. That'll be a base hit into left field. Jeremy Pena will score. The Astros out in front, two to nothing. Tucker drives an RBI number 50 35 on the year. Inside, walking Abreu after getting ahead 0 2 to load the bases. Great at bats. Jolks drives one deep to left field. Could be his first career grand slam, and it is. Corey Jolks, a career grand slam number one. Puts the Astros in front six to nothing with a bolt to left. Jolks mania just went wild up here north of the border. Wow. Turn that around in a hurry. Scoring four with one swing. Corey Jolts. How about that start? Could draw it up any better, could you? Still just one out. There's a line drive to center field. That'll be down for a hit. Hit number seven of the inning. Make that six of the inning for the Astros to go along with a walk. How about the big swing by Corey Jolt? This was the big one. Didn't waste any time. He got that two-seamer running back inside, pulled the hands in, and went into absolute launch mode. You can see where Kirk was set up outside. That ball tilling well to the inside. And that is right in the crush zone for Corey Jolks. First career grand slam. Runner on the go. There's a line drive to center field. That'll be down for a hit. That is hit number seven of the inning. Eight of the first nine have reached base. Second time around for the Blue Jays. This ball popped in the air down the right field side. Long run for Kevin Biggio near the crowd, and Biggio will put it away. Everybody tagging. Myers taking advantage. Is he going to be in there? Barely. He didn't have anybody covering second, so Jake tried to get in there. And a swing and a miss. The Blue Jays needed 46 pitches to get through the inning. DH. And the first pitch is down for a ball, 1-0. 1-2 and one and two the count. And Springer takes a call third strike on the outside corner. Scott Berry may have expanded that corner a little bit for the first out for Brandon Bielan. More than Bichette. There's another line drive, and it's another opposite field hit. 42nd of the season for Bichette. Jake Myers plays it back in. Bo Bichette, a one-out base runner. Effective against. There goes Bichette. Swing and a miss, one and two. Bichette picks up a stolen base, his third of the year. Little tapper towards short. Pena will charge. Throws. Guerrero was hustling, but he is out by less than a half step. They have won four in a row before tonight as Chapman sends this one high in the air to right field. Playable for Kyle Tucker. Brandon Belak will work a shutout bottom of the first after getting six runs scored for him in the top half. Able to get those guys up there and reward them for good plays. Jay Jackson has come in and Restored order to the game for the Blue Jays as he has picked up three outs, including a couple of strikeouts. Oh, Jay Jackson. This guy's come out and picked up three strikeouts in a row after getting Dubon to fly out. He's There's a sharply hit ground ball backhanded by Merrifield. Tucker hits it hard, but he's retired for the final out of the inning.
Nothing like getting a six spot to start your day. This ball <laughs> looped into left. Long run for Jolks, but he has time to get there. And there's one away. Yeah, I think you're right about that mindset. You need to have an aggressive mindset. Like you said, think it's still 0 0. Here's Bregman and Pena. That was a little miscommunication. It looked like Alex wanted it most of the way and finally gave way to, to Pena. So if you give up a solo home run, you're okay in a 6 0 game. This ball drilled to deep left field, and there's Alejandro Kirk hitting a solo home run. Belak points out there thinking maybe that was fan interference, but that ball was going to clear the wall either way. Kirk hits his third home run of the year. There was a slider down in the zone. Kirk just went down there and got it. But to TK's point, you've got that little bit of a six-run buffer, so the solo home run's not going to get you. It's when you start to give up those two, three-run home runs after walks. Ball hit sharply past Mauricio Dubon into center field for a base hit. So with two outs, a home run followed by a single here. Biggio stays this time, and there's a line drive in the left field. Three consecutive hits with two outs. A home run and two singles, and back to the top of the order we go for George Springer. Ground ball towards short. Two big hops for Pena. He will throw to first, and that will do it for the Blue Jays. Hits sharply, but right at Matt Chapman, he has a backhand and makes the play across to get a Brayu for the first out of the inning. And he gets jolts. That is four strikeouts for Jackson. And there's a base hit down the right field side. Diaz, two for two today, had great at-bats yesterday. That's four hits in his last five at-bats. Yiner starting to feel it. There's a base hit into center field. Both Diaz and Myers two for two. And the ball skips away from Kevin Kiermeyer. The normally sure fielding center fielder has that one go off his glove for an error. Into center field. Playable for Kiermeyer. A couple of two out hits for the Astros and two men left on base. 2 one pitch is hit hard to center field, but Jake Myers is there. But Shep put a good charge into it, but hit it at the center fielder for the first down. He's got launch angle like that last one from Bo Bichette. They start to go a little bit further, but if you can make your pitch down in the zone on the edges and force him to swing at your pitches, then you're going to have some opportunities to go out there and rack up some outs. Three and one now. And this ball hit high in the air, pretty deep to right center field. Myers and Tucker converge. It's Myers who takes charge and puts it away for the final out. In the aspect that you can kind of bar hop throughout the ballpark. I mean, he was expecting the change up, got the fastball, 96 mile an hour pitch, froze him for the first out of the inning. He hit a fastball out against him in his last at bat. This ball to straightaway center field. Kiermeyer will watch it. Speak of the flight deck, Air Jordan just landed in the flight deck. A bomb to straightaway center field. Now arriving at the West Chest flight deck. Is Jordan Alvarez, Air Jordan, hitting number 16 on the year? <laughs> we just <laughs> talked about that. <laughs> this guy's unreal. I don't know if I will ever get bored watching this guy hit. That was a bomb. Talked about that changeup, TK. You better be good with that thing. And if you beat him once, there's probably a slim chance you're going to beat him again. 452. Got jammed. Hit a changeup 452. Yeah, he's generating all the power on that changeup. He's trying to get Dubon to be impressed, but this ball hit pretty well. Kiermaier will back up a little bit and make the catch. Bregman to straightaway center hits the ball hard, but he's out number two. Go back to that home run swing. There's that circle changeup grip from Richards. Had high hopes at that point, but when he saw it, Stay up in the zone, and Jordan could see it as long as he wanted to. The big man laid into it. Yeah, there's definitely a meal being served on that thing. He's landed in the flight deck, if I'm not yes. mistaken. This 
Ball hit pretty well by Tucker to left field. That sends Barsho back. He'll watch this one go. King Tuck says, don't forget about me. Might not have hit the flight deck, but that's an opposite field home run for Tucker. And the Astros with two solo home runs now lead this game 8-1. to one. King Tuck wants in on the action. Going to the opposite field up into the Toronto bullpen. That'll not only scatter them, that will get them into action as Richards given up, has given up home runs to both left-handed hitters in this lineup. Tucker has been taking some great swings here in the last four or five days, getting walked in against Anaheim and Jordan. One lead. Abreu checks his swing on a pitch down and in, but went too far. That'll be a three-pitch strikeout to end the inning. But... And you got to stay on that pitch to drive it the other way. This one on the ground, past the diving Mauricio Dubon. Dalton Barsho with a base hit to lead off the fourth inning. Blue Jays now with five hits in the game. This one high in the air to left field. Corey Jolts doesn't have to move very far. Corey comes in and puts it away for the first out. In the game last night. This one on the ground. This will help Belak. This will be a quick inning. 5-4-3 on the double play as they go around the horn on the ground ball off the bat of Alejandro Kirk. It'll be Jolts, Yiner Diaz, and Jake Myers. Jolts into center field, sending Kiermaier back. Kevin in front of the warning track will put it away. And there's one away here in the fifth. Broken bat. Yes, he did. Three for three. That bat had three hits in it tonight, so he'll be disappointed about it breaking, but he'll be happy to be on second with a double. Back up the middle, who's staying on pitches on the outside. This ball hit pretty well to right. All the way back is Kiermeyer looking up. That's gone. Jake Myers, opposite field home run into the Astros bullpen. We have double digits for Houston's offense. It is 10 to 1. Speaking of thump, have we got a new Jake from Rake Farm? <laughs> That was well played. You spoke that one into existence. I feel like, oh, man, the khakis are looking good on him. Home run number six for Myers. A two-run shot the other way. That was well struck. That was, was. well. See Kevin Bizio shut it down? That's what kind of counting for eight of their ten runs. Dubon hits one into right field. That'll be playable for Bizio. That's the second out of the inning. Big swing from Jake Myers. Watch the balance. He's got that leg kick, but he gets it down in plenty of time, and he's not leaning over. He's not lunging towards the pitcher. He is just stacked on that lower half as the arms drive through and blast that ball into the Astros' bullpen. And again, off the bat, we knew it looked good, but I was watching the outfielders. Both Kiermaier and Biggio completely. Up the middle, backhand try by Merrifield. He can't come over the cleanly. He knew he was going to have to hustle with Pena going down the line. We'll see how they score that. That could very well be an infield hit. This one sliced. Long run for Varsho near the fence. He'll jump up and he'll make a great wow. catch right into the netting. Dalton Varsho. It to him. Ground ball right to Jose Abreu. He'll use b covering for the first out. That ball struck well into right center field. That'll find a gap and get all the way to the wall. Myers will play it off the wall and keep Kiermaier at second. Kiermaier tied for the major league lead with four triples, but he gets a double here. He's a one-out base runner. George DHing tonight. He's now line drive to short. Almost turned two. Kiermaier gets back. George hit that one on the number, but he hits it right at the Astros shortstop, Jeremy Payne. Towards first, under the glove of Abreu, it scoots into right field. That'll be another opposite field hit for Bichette. Kiermaier will score. Two out RBI for Bo Bichette, makes it a 10 to 2 game. Ground ball towards short. Pena will back up on it and make the play to first. It'll be bounced in there, and Abreu stays on the bag for the final out of the inning. John Schneider. Bregman pops this one high in the air on a 2-0 pitch. Alejandro Kirk in foul territory. Stays with it and makes the play. Reaches out and rolls one to the right side. With Merrifield will be there to make the play. Two outs 
in the seventh. Think about it, but yeah, how about you? Oh, I was always pants down. Yeah. Do you ever do that, though? The back of the pants on the back of no. the shoes? No, I just got a bit big enough to hang over my pants, <laughs> over my shoes. Right now, he's gone through six innings of work in just one other start. That was in Milwaukee. Pena from deep in the hole, his throw, not in time. Not sure even if Abreu makes that pick, if it was going to beat Chapman. This one popped in the air in a shallow left. Coming on, Jolts going out. Pena, who wants it? It'll be Jolts, who wasn't sure where Pena was, and jumped just in case he was about to run into Jeremy. That ball hit hard past Pena into center field. Going from first to second and staying there will be Chapman. Whit Merrifield has his first hit of the night. That's now nine hits for Toronto. Counts 0-1 on Kirk. That's a ground ball towards Pena. He could turn two again with Dubon in the middle. They do turn a double play. Kirk grounds into a double play for the second time tonight. Jolks with that grand slam. Part of that six-run first inning is now one for four on the night as he goes down on strikes. One away here in the seventh. Tip caught by Kirk. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Simber, getting Jolks and now Diaz. And there's two away in the inning. Half of their hits from the 7-8-9 spots, but they're not going to add any to the hit total this inning as Simber has a 1-2-3-7th. Couple of strikeouts and a ground out. Bend himself a little bit, protect that bullpen. He strikes out his former college teammate. They were together at Notre Dame in 2015 and 16. That bat has continued. Seth Martinez becomes the first guy loosening in the Astros' bullpen. And there is the first walk of the night. Belak Hit him. Pitch in on his hand and it got a piece of Springer. So that'll put runners on first and second. Into center field. Myers back on it. He'll have room. He'll put it away. Tagging at second and moving to third is Kiermaier. That'll be the second out of the inning. Highest percentage of ground balls. That ball smoked to left field. Corey Jokes will watch this one go off the base of the wall. One run will score. Being held up at third is Springer. Vlad Guerrero Jr. laces a double in the left field. It's now a 10 to 3 game. 6 67 for strikes. And a call third strike. Seth Martinez cleans up the inning, leaving two stranded. And we're going to head to the eighth. Belak goes six and two thirds, three earned no, runs. Adam Sim Simber back out there for a second inning of work. And this one will be hit to the new shortstop. Ernie Clement, who took over for Bo Bichette, throws that one low. Dug out by Vlad Guerrero Jr. nicely for the first out. He hit since that fifth inning. Towards the middle, played by Whit Merrifield. Payne is retired. Two ground ball outs here in the inning. Since that little neck issue kept him out of the Tampa Bay series in the first game against Philadelphia. Chaz gets hit by that pitch. <laughs> Alan Ashby traded from Cleveland to Toronto. There is a fair ball, and Alex Bregman has his hitting streak continued. It's a 12-gamer. Bregman thought about going to second. He's going to put on the brakes. He might be in trouble. It hits him, and it's going to score a run. Bregman thought about second again, but he's going to turn around again. Alex Bregman making a lot of U-turns between first and second. It all results in a run for the Astros, and Breggy extends his hitting streak to 12. Unless they want Mesa to go an inning in the third. Kyle Tucker, the reason why he's in there. The lefty, though, doesn't mind hitting against lefty pitching as he just gets one pass with Merrifield. Tucker has a three-hit night. He is three for five with a base hit here in the eighth. Game for Tucker with three. Myers has three, and now Abreu is going to join the party. 17th hit of the game for the Astros. Jose Abreu legs out an infield hit that was knocked down by Vlad Guerrero Jr. Manoa was knocked out of the start. Schultz punches this one towards the middle. That'll be caught by Merrifield in the final out of the inning. Of their own tonight. They've scored three runs, but they're down big 11 to three. This ball hammered deep to right field. And that one will be into the Astros' bullpen for a home run. Dalton Varsho hitting his 10th home run of the season, picked on that 1-1 pitch. And it's now an 11-4 contest.
Marshall went up and got around that fastball up. Pulling it into that Astros bullpen. When Merrifield's hit by a pitch. So the Astros hitting a couple of batters the last two innings. Merrifield. The ball hit high in the air. Kirk got under this one. Corey Jolks will come in. And put it away for the first out of the inning. Into center field, well struck. Back goes Myers. He is near the warning track and he puts it away. Biggio gave it a ride, but he flies out to deep center for the second out of the inning. A little tapper. Martinez will let it bounce a couple of times and underhand it to Jose Abreu to end the inning. Take that. And this ball smoked to center field. Yiner's already having a career day, and he's going to add extra bases to it. If he hustles, he's going to go for second, and he will get in there. He's never had a three-hit game before, so now he ends up with a four-hit game. Yiner Diaz, have a night. Time up when he grounded out to third against the side armor, Adam Cinder. He has a four-hit game. Yiner Diaz and Jake Myers each setting career highs with four-hit games. The eight nine hitters combining for a huge night. Dubon goes down on strikes. Meza picks up his first strikeout. Astros avoids hitting into a double play. Chaz McCormick's on deck. And we're going to have it here, Blummer. This is a big moment. Oh, this is what I've been waiting for all day. In the air to right field, playable for Nathan Lucas. He will put it away. Meza continues to own the Battle of Marauders. 3-2 pitch. George goes after 99 and misses it. That'll be a strikeout to start the bottom half of the ninth inning. It's here. This ball hit hard. Past the diving Jeremy Pena in the left field. Well, Clement has his first hit. Swing and a foul tip. Caught by Yiner Diaz, and that will be the second out here in the ninth. Kevin Gosman. Ball hit to left field. Should be the end of the game. Corey Jolks in foul territory. will put it away, and that is the final out of this one. Astros scored six in the first and kept adding on. They win 11-4. That is a nice way to kick off a seven-game road trip. No, it was a great job by the Astros getting those runs for Brandon Belak early on. Corey Jones with that big grand slam in that first inning. But it was a lot of fun to watch this offense go to work, rack up 19 hits, put up some big numbers, and pad those stats a little bit behind Brian, Brandon Belak. So the Astros postgame show presented by Whataburger will be coming up. It will feature Kevin Eschenfelder and Brian Bogusevic, your host tonight. Vanessa Richardson will get interviews both on the field here after the game and in the Astros clubhouse. You'll hear from Dusty Baker, amongst others. Astros postgame show coming up next. Thank you.